very warm welcome to all of you who has joined this meeting and in this meeting we will be learning about how to deploy a website on Microsoft Azure. A little about me, uh, my name is Udit Kapoor. I am a third year BTEC computer science engineering student at the North Cap University and I am also an Alpha Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador. So this is a program from Microsoft which dwells on creating a community which tends of learning and growing through mutual benefits uh, from its members. And this is a program that is being done under that Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador program. All right, so let me just guide you through the event structure real quick. Uh, since this is a hands on session, what I'll do is I'll just cover the basics like what is cloud computing, what is Microsoft Azure in like five to 10 minutes, a short brief introduction, and then we'll move on to the hands on session where we can uh, check out how to deploy a Django website on Azure, a React website on Azure, or maybe even a WordPress website on Microsoft Azure. Then we'll move on to cost analysis. So once you're in an MNC and you have already deployed your website to Microsoft Azure, Microsoft Azure gives you an option to, you know, calculate all your costs, where the money is going, what resources using what money, uh, and it gives you a detailed explanation and I'll give you an example for it. And then finally, at the end of the session, I'll tell you how can you practice more on Microsoft Azure. Uh, I know most of you are students and uh, you guys would be wondering that if you already get to know how to deploy, but you want some practice, so I'll be telling you how to get some free credits for Azure and uh, what other resources can you refer if you get any doubts after the session gets over. All right. So starting with cloud computing. So what basically is cloud computing? Uh, a simple definition of cloud computing is you got a, a number of resources on the internet for which you don't actually have to pay the entire cost. You only have to pay what you use of that resource. That's the simplistic and the most basic cloud computing definition that uh, you can hear. Uh, reading from this PowerPoint, cloud computing is the on-demand availability of computing system resources, especially data storage and computing power. So basically, uh, suppose if you guys cannot afford a RTX 3090 and a high level processor, suppose i9 or Ryzen 9, but you want to play a certain game for a certain amount of hours. So what do you do? Do you go to the market and you buy a one lakh or one and a half lakh system just to play that game for like an hour? Or you could do something called cloud computing where uh, you go to a certain platform and then you get allocated a GPU and a CPU and you just pay for the half an hour you use and then you can just give back those resources and that's uh, pretty much it about cloud computing because that is how you can use high level computing systems and storage systems and use them without actually having to pay for the entire cost in the upfront large cost, which as we all know is currently uh, pretty high. So uh, large clouds often have functions distributed over multiple location, each location being a data center. Cloud computing relies on sharing of resources to achieve coherence and economies of scale. So basically, in a nutshell, it's you just borrow some resources for the time you need it, you pay for the time you need it, and then you give back those resources. And hence, your work is being done at a fraction of the cost that you would have had to if you had to buy the entire system. All right. Coming up next is Microsoft Azure. So what is Microsoft Azure? Microsoft Azure is a platform which gives you the ability to borrow those uh, resources that we just talked about at a pay as you go system. And it provides a lot of other things like security. So suppose you deploy a website and now you don't have to worry about uh, the server being, if you were to employ your own server, you would have to worry about its security, its scalability, and all that stuff. So with Azure, your data is private and protected. It's scalable. So suppose you start a website and it starts getting 
a lot of customers from a lot of places all of entire the world so what if it if you had gone the conventional way you would have to uh, buy more servers set set them up invest in their security and all that but with microsoft azure it's as easy as to create another instance in in another country so that that country gets a uh, better service and that's how you can scale and bring your operation to a worldwide access next is worldwide access as we can see so anywhere in the world uh, the servers can be situated are distributed over you know different continents and can be accessed from anywhere in the world flexibility you can always downsize your application suppose a uh, suppose you there are few months from march to let's say august where your business sees very less uh, people going on to the website and from uh, september to the next uh, feb you get a, a lot of customers and a lot of orders so what you can do is you can scale down the resources for that period of time and you can scale up the resources for the uh, next part of the year so that you have the flexibility at all times so this is a basic and brief introduction about cloud computing and microsoft azure all right a simple example would be a building so suppose if you are starting a company and uh, you would need an office right so for that office you would have to uh, rent a floor you would have to buy some computers you would have to buy uh, coffee machines cafeteria you would have to buy electricity and you would have to pay and these are things you cannot just pay for like a day right these are things you have to either commit to a long term so if you rent a building or a floor you cannot just rent it for a day you have to rent it for at least uh, one year or three years it's lease based so you cannot just so what if uh, your startup just you just don't want to continue with your startup after two months you're not getting enough income so what do you do you are already bound so that's where the concept of cloud computing comes in so what does microsoft azure do it says all right i'll let you use my building my computers my cafeteria my electricity everything that's on my name i have taken the huge lease so i've taken like 10 years lease you just use it for uh, a day or a month or you just have to pay for what you use so you use it for a hour you just pay it for one hour you just use you use it for one day you pay for one day use it for one month and that's how it goes so that's what microsoft azure does and that's what cloud computing is all about all right, so enough about uh, all the theory and all that stuff. Let's get to the good part. So uh, let me just open my browser. Yeah. So all right, I hope you guys have uh, seen this website. All right, so this website is a project that I did a few months back with a team of uh, my friends. And we got our society's professional website onto Microsoft Azure platform. So this website is currently hosted in Central India server. So it's accessible from anywhere in the India in India at very low latency speeds. And then it's also accessible from anywhere in the world at a little higher speed. And this is a website that's based on Django. So it's not a simple WordPress website or simple HTML and CSS. It's a complete um, backend based website and has a lot of operations through which I'll be guiding you how to deploy something like this on Azure. All right. So the first step is to go to the Azure portal. That's pretty simple. All you got to do is open your browser, you write P O R T A L, and that's what you get portal.azure.com. So this is the place where you can manage all your resources, create resources, and everything think of it as a gui version of microsoft azure you can also do it with cli that's command line but uh, we'll be using this all right it's gonna ask you to log in but since i have already used it i am already logged in so my account is udit.kapoor at the red student ambassadors.com and i have some credits available in this account i'll also tell you how to get free credits so that you can uh, come back to this video and see what you can do all right so the first step is 
simple. We'll start with WordPress, then we'll go on to Django and React, and then we'll go on to the cost analysis. The first part is you go here and you create a resource. Simple enough. And it gives you a lot of categories in which you can create. If you want something to do with AI ML, do you want to do it with blockchain? Do you want to just use computing power? Do you want DevOps? Do you want databases? So, and these are uh, popular things that it offers. So it's an Ubuntu server, web app, SQL database, a function app, Azure Cosmos database, and Kubernetes service. So these are the popular offerings and you can choose. So we'll here just type is word. Yes. Simple enough. We'll just go to WordPress and we'll just create on click on the create button. And it's as simple as entering an app name. So suppose I type put it a poor log. Alright. So it's gonna check if the name is available from dot azure websites.net. So it's gonna be Udit Kapoor blog dot azure websites.net. Then it's going to ask me for a subscription. So subscription is basically the credits that you guys have in your account. So I have one that's Visual Studio. And then comes something called Resource Group. So Resource Group is a very interesting concept. What it does is a website uh, has a front end, has a back end, and a lot of moving components. Suppose you're doing a project, and in the end you want the entire cost of the project, or you want to just Manage the entire project with just one thing. So that's what you do. Create a resource group. A resource group will start adding things that are uh, supposed the front end of the website, the back end of the website, the storage server of the website, and it's going to group it. And when we are going to uh, either want to delete, upgrade, or see the cost of what it is, you know, taking from our account, we'll use the resource group. Then it's going to ask me for a database provider. Uh, we can create a separate Azure database for MySQL, which can work independently of the website. So if you have uh, multiple instances of the WordPress website, you can create this. But the app also provides us with some storage. Since we are going to keep it at one place, I choose MySQL in app. Then it's going to ask me for the plan. Simple. Application insights is how the application is doing, how much traffic it is receiving, and all that. And then we'll simply go to create. It's going to take a few moments and it's going to first allot us the, uh, the allot us the domain name that we have written here. We can also add custom domains. I'll go into that later. And it's going to start allocating us some resource on its uh, infinitely big data center. Then it's going to uh, start WordPress installation on that server so that uh, those who already deploy WordPress website knows that uh, a complete GUI comes on the screen and you gotta install WordPress and then you can build on it. And that is what Microsoft Azure is doing for us right now currently and uh, usually what happens in WordPress we first create a local uh, host and then we develop the website and then we publish it onto the internet but here we can directly publish it onto the temporary domain name provided and we can uh, build on it. We can give access to uh, some if we are building it for a client. So we can give the temporary domain name for the client so the client can track the website's progress and everything. So we'll wait for a few minutes. So since it's take uh, it's taking a long time because uh, WordPress is a huge uh, software it uh, and WordPress deployment has a lot of uh, steps. So all those steps are being automated and we don't have to worry about a single thing. Till then I'll just open my uh, GitHub so that the next part is
so deploying wordpress is one of the most easiest things uh, you can do on microsoft azure then we'll move on to a little bit of complex stuff that we have to uh, do for react and django based websites and then we'll move on to cost analysis and i hope you guys are aware about ci cd i'll just give a brief introduction till this deployment is in progress so ci cd stands from continuous integration and continuous deployment so what happens is once you code a website right all right i uh, will delve into that later uh, our deployment has succeeded and here we'll just go to go to resource and here we get resources everything that we need for the resource so we have the deployment center we have authentication application insights i'll let you know later um, browse as i told you it allotted us this custom domain it's a subdomain and here is where a temporary wordpress site will be visible to the entire internet as we are building it along and as you can see it has already configured my databases and everything and it's i only have to just go and install this english uh, continue i have to give my site title so i will just say uh, with blog i will say admin my password is also admin since it's confirm use of your password uh, my website uh, all right i just all right so here we'll just use discourage search engines from indexing this site why because this is a temporary one and we don't want it to appear in google search till we are completely done with it and that's it uh, we have a complete wordpress website i'll just log in in under 10 minutes of us deciding to create a website and we have in 10 minutes a complete wordpress panel that is hosted has a custom domain and can be accessed all over the internet and then we can create our own customizations and themes and plugins all right so next uh, we have is now that we have already learned how to create a uh, wordpress websites now we'll move on to something a little more complicated like django react and we'll take this websites code base as an example of how to deploy a website all right simple enough we'll go to create a resource this time we'll choose a web app so last time we chose a uh, something called wordpress and now we are going to use web app in the web app section it asks us a lot of questions so that it can automate almost the entire process of uh, pushing the code over to website building it running it and everything so first question is subscription so obviously it needs to know at which place you need to charge it so it could be a credit card or any other subscription now it's going to ask me a resource group since i already explained what a resource group is all i got to do is use my udit kapoor blog uh, now what it's going to do is it's going to combine the cost of my wordpress website and this web app and it's when i'm going to use cost analysis it's going to show me all of them combined uh, let me just check uh, real quick Uh, yeah, unmuted sharing and the recording is working. Yeah. All right. So now it's going to ask us for a web app name. So web app name is basically uh, this custom domain uh, subdomain. It's just temporary. I'll also tell you how to add your custom domain if you have uh, something like i triple e n c u dot in uh, or something like udit kapoor dot me or dot tech. So we'll just say. Uh, 
demo Django website. And since it's available, so it's going to assign us this subdomain. Now the second question is publish. So are we going to give it a code or a Docker container? I won't go into Docker right now because we already have the code and this is about Azure and not Docker. So we'll use code. Here comes the runtime stack. So here, if you are deploying a React website, what you'll do is you'll search for Node and use Node as you can use .NET. We have Java. We have we can also deploy PHP website. We can use React. Python Ruby. So these are all the stacks that Azure supports currently. We'll be using Python 3.8 since we are using a Django website and Django, as you all know, works on Python. If you are uh, deploying a PHP website, you go here. If you're doing a React website, you choose a node and so on. Next is going to ask us for a region. So now here comes the worldwide uh, thing that I was telling you about. So Azure has a huge lot of resources at various locations. So it's in Australia, three places in Australia, Brazil, Canada, uh, US, Asia, and all of uh, a lot of storage spaces is available and we can choose any. So if we just type India, we get Central, South, West. So I'm just going to choose Central India for now because I am located in India. Next is going to ask us Linux plan. We'll have to create a new one. And now comes the interesting part. So here is the flexibility part that I was telling you about. So you can choose the spec of your website. So if it's going to be a production grade website, you need more computational units, you need more memory. If and if it's a huge website, you need at least 195 minimum, 840 total computing units, 14 GB of memory. And these are other specs, but here is the fun part. Suppose you are using it just for developing, testing, and other that. So you also get a free SQ. Currently, it's not uh, supported in Linux one in India, but if I change the region, I get the free one. But in free, you don't get custom domains and all that. So this is the one I recommend, V1. It gives me 100 total computational units, 1.7 GB of memory, which is more than enough. It's 946.67 INR per month estimated. And I get custom domain and SSL certification for free. So as you all know for SSL certification, HTTPS, you guys have to additionally purchase it. But here Azure provides it. <coughs> and I get 10 GB of storage, which is more than enough. So I apply and then I'll go to deployment review. All right, so here is something uh, we can enable or disable continuous deployment from here, but currently we're going to disable it. Why? Because I'm going to show you the deployment center later on, and you can connect more than like GitHub, Azure pipelines and other stuff, and also upload your code just if you don't want continuous deployment. In monitoring, do we want application insights or not? So basically how the application is performing, its health, number of requests, everything gets served. Uh, currently it's not supported uh, in my subscription and runtime stack, but yes, you can enable it for huge websites. Tags is something we're gonna keep at basic. And here is going to give us a review as to what we are creating. This is the name. We're using code, we're using Python 3.8. This is our 100 ACU, 1.7 GB memory, the basic plan, and we're going to click create. <clears throat> so this is what this part is going to do. It's going to create a, uh, take a chunk of uh, storage from Azure, assign it to me, give it a custom domain name, and give me the GUI to operate it completely. I'm going to wait for the deployment, and then we'll go, we'll go to our github to see how code will as you can see the web wordpress website that we deployed like just 10 minutes back is completely up and running this is a default theme of wordpress but we can do pretty much everything that we want to and you can currently go to udit kapoor blog.azurewebsites.net and see this in real time <coughs> Thank you. 
All right, as we can see, our deployment is complete. I'm gonna go to resource. So this is basically, oh, I think I made a spelling error, but okay, we can fix it later anyway. All right, so it gives me the essentials of the website. So what, where is it hosted? What app services, uh, B11 as I explained. And now how do we deploy? So we go to the deployment center in the left side. I'm gonna wait for it. All right, till it's loading, I'll show you. Uh, so this is my GitHub and I have created <coughs> my repository for the Django website, which is private for now. So you can't access it, but yes, Azure supports both private and public repositories. So if the organization wants to keep its code completely closed and not open source, it can use private repos as well. Uh, here, as you can see, it's Python, JS, HTML, and CSS. <coughs> All right, so uh, coming on to you guys have to create some platform specific adjustments to your website. So like in Django and uh, React. So suppose I give you an example for React. Re uh, React requires something called packages.json, which tells the uh, our local server or a website or any place that we are hosted as to what are the things that we need to completely run this website. In Django, there's this thing called requirements.txt, which is basically all the parameters, uh, all the packages that I'm using, which Azure would need to install. So it's gonna go to all these packages, install it locally, and then it's going to start and build my website. So this is very important. So you need to have your requirements.txt or packages.json. You can easily make it pip uh, freeze uh, then the symbol and requirements.txt. That is one of the most important things. Second important thing is uh, gotta update your settings.py. So in Django, you can actually uh, restrict what places the code will actually work on. So I can basically restrict the entire code to just one domain and without that domain being in that code base, the website will never ever work. So here I would have to go to seconds.py and here as you can see allowed host, it's IEEE NCU, uh, these are whatever the host that I have and here I would have to edit, go down, just have to simply go down here add a comma and two of these go back to our azure see uh wait, i'll do this later overview we would have to browse and as you can see we get this so we need to copy this go back to our code and we have to paste it here i'll recommend removing these this is only for Django website and uh, since our IEEE website is hosted currently like this, that is why uh, we have to add this. All I got to do is now since this is pure GitHub, I just commit my changes. And now I'll go back to my uh, code. All right, so as you can see, uh, it, the website that I deployed it says, hi Python, uh, hey Python developers, your app service is up and running. Now we have to deploy our code. So now let's go to the deployment center. <clears throat> All right, uh, this is the time I'll tell you about CI CD. So CI CD is continuous integration and continuous uh, deployment. What it means is basically, uh, if you make a change in your GitHub repo and you don't so conventionally what happens is you upload your code and as the version 2 of the website comes out you re-upload the code and it read uh, does that but here with azure we get ci cd so what you can do is just link your github repo and as soon as they, it detects a change in the github repo like i pushed some commit i made some changes 
it's going to automatically get those commit uh, changes automatically rebuild my website automatically deploy it without a single human intervention uh, interaction in between all i have to do is just push my commit on github it's going to do everything all by itself so that's one more plus point all right so uh, I can do manual deployment, so I can just upload my code, but I'll choose continuous deployment. So I can use local git, bitbucket, and GitHub. So I have GitHub account. Here is a very important thing. Uh, so GitHub provider. So provider is basically uh, when it's building the entire website, it takes some computational power, right? So we want that we are already paying for the Azure web app. So we want it to use Azure's credit and not GitHub Actions or anything else. So GitHub Actions is something uh, you get like $5 uh, in your educational pack and you can use GitHub Actions to build website, but that's going to be an external cost. So we're not going to use that. We're going to use app service, build service, since you're already paying for it. <clears throat> Next, we are going to, here it's going to ask you to sign in. I'm already signed in. As you can see, I'll choose an organization. That's it. Now it has already fetched all my repositories that's currently on my GitHub. And all I got to do is select IEEE website 2021. And here is now it's fetching all the branches of this repository. And here is also one uh, good thing. So you can create two different branches. There's one main which will be deployed and you can use one for developing. So suppose uh, there are five developers working on this website. They all want to add changes, make a version two out of it without affecting the original one at the current moment. Because as we know, as we change the website, we are going to actually have to uh, test it a lot. So we create a, another branch in which we can push the changes and it won't change our currently deployed website since we will be using main here. And then once we are completely satisfied with the version two, that it's bug free, tested and everything, we can merge the two repositories and go ahead all right so all we got to do is save it's going to set up deployment now it's going to take a little time so what it will do is uh, all right it has connected everything now all we got to do is go to logs uh, it's gonna first get the entire code base from github to azure then it's going to start create a virtual environment uh, install all the packages written in the requirements.txt file then it's going to try and build the website that's from the code base. If it's successful, it's going to get deployed at this domain. And that's about it. All right, we're going to wait and we're going to refresh. Yeah, so see, now it's getting the fetch from git at the rate github.com slash so. It's fetching all the code base from my GitHub. Currently, it's uh, temporary. And this is also a good thing. So in logs, you can actually see what are we building and we can also have detailed logs for the thing. So uh, what package didn't install? What error are we getting? And currently it looks very easy because I'm doing it for like the uh, 15th or 20th time. But when I did it for the first time, I faced some issues and I'm doing this session so that you don't face those issues. So all the points that I told you, are important to add uh, the post in that uh, to add requirements.txt to get uh, all right all right so now it has already gotten all the data and now this is my last commit update settings.py now it's using running oryx build so this is where uh, i was saying that this build is what costs us money right it was it's what cost us server power. So we can either give it to GitHub or we can give it to Azure. And I've chosen Azure because I already have credits in it. This is commit author. So if there are multiple people working here, so th there would be multiple authors. So you will know who has actually given the go through to finally get this website updated or changed. We gotta just wait and it's gonna have success active here after it has completely done. If the build fails, it says failed and it's gonna tell us why it failed. So was it some package? Was it some error that we did? Was it something from Azure side? 
everything will be transparent and completely accessible. I'm just going to take this. All right, so uh, as we are waiting for uh, this build to complete, we'll just go here. So I remember I told you, I'll tell you how to put up custom domain names here. So here, if I go to custom domains, completely the left side panel, we'll get everything from deployment settings and overview, get to custom domains. And here, all we have to do is we can buy the domains from Microsoft Azure, but we won't be doing that. We already have. All I got to do is click on add custom domain. Right, I'll add a custom domain like ulitpapur.me. Right, it's going to say that it's a valid domain. I'm going to press on validate. Now it's going to say uh, they should be. Yes, so the host name is available. Now we have to prove the ownership. So I cannot just write that facebook.com and then it's a valid domain name, right? But there needs to be a record verifying that I am the owner of that domain and yes, this is my website. So this is what I got to do. All I have to do is open my uh, domain name provider. So I have it on Namecheap. All I got to do is open the records, create one TXT record with this as host and this as value, create an A type record with add the rate as hosts and uh, this as value. All I got to do is copy paste and my website once it verifies, will start pointing to that. Currently, it's just uh, Django uh, demo Django website dot Azure website dot net. So that's what happened here. So we got this subdomain. We got at the uh, a host and value txt and a type parameters here. And then once it validated, the website went here and started mirroring. All right, coming back to deployment center. Okay, uh, uh, I hope our website logs and yes, as you can see, uh, the website is success active. So it has taken all the code, built it and it has found no errors in that code. And now if I go here and I refresh, it's going to take a little time, but as you can see, my complete IEEE NCU website is now here and let me tell you, these are completely independent. So if at any moment I want to cancel this website and only keep this one, I can do that. I have all my blogs and uh, everything. And this is comp and it's super fast since it's Azure and it's uses it's using cloud computing. So it's faster than a lot of normal conventional hosting because th those are shared ones get all my data uh, I get everything as you can see I go here I get everything from my database which is currently hosted on Azure as well but it's not here this is all coming from database that we created for this website and as I told you that uh, Azure can be done for the front end back end and everything I just show you that everything works and then we'll move on to the cost analysis part. It's completely uh, we can integrate URL anything Instagram posts every anything and everything we want. We can easily integrate. Getting the images from the database. So the database is also hosted on Azure. And that's it for 
Django. Same you can do it with React and same you can do it with WordPress. So now that we have done a little hands on and you guys know actually how to deploy a website. You guys uh, won't be scared anymore like Azure and cloud computing and what is this and how do I do that? So it's completely easy. It's completely intuitive. A very good GUI from Microsoft and it's everything everyone. All right, so as I told you, uh, let's move on to the second last part of this and we are running short on time as well. So we are going to open Chrome. We're going to use a different profile because we're going to go to portal.azure. All right. As you can see, I have switched over to a separate account. So this is Priyanchi.Kathuria. So Priyanchi is my senior and she's a beta Microsoft uh, Learn Student Ambassador. And when we deployed this website, we used uh, her account. So this is what you will see. So this is a resource group. If I click here, I told you that each and every resource that's connected to it, I can see right at one place so it's my app service plan my database as i told you so this is my front end this is my storage this is my back end as you can see all right so the cool thing is we can go to something called cost analysis so cost management cost analysis it's gonna load up All right, as you can see, so this gives me the actual cost of what my website is costing as till right now from 1st of August. So it's 17th of August. It has costed me 1861 rupees to host my website from 1st of August till 17th of August. It gives me a forecast. So what would be my amount would be if I keep at continuing at this rate till 31st. So it's going to cost me 3907 rupees for one month of hosting on Azure. And I know this is expensive, but when you're in MNC or if you're working at something, if you have credits, so it's completely transparent and amazingly fast to host a website on Azure. As you can see, it shows a lot of graphs and pie charts. So my Postgres server costs 1377 and my app service only costs 484. So if you guys don't have a storage system, uh, and that's not complex. Suppose it's a portfolio or a resume. You guys don't actually need a completely independent storage system. In Django, we need, but in portfolio website, we can just put a HTML tag and put those web, uh, images in. So it's going to cost me just 484 rupees per month to host the website, which is very, very cheap as compared to other hosting. Like other hostings you guys buy. Uh, for 1200, 1800 for one year or two year pack. And suppose in just one month you guys you decide you don't want that hosting anymore. But what do you do? You are locked in. So here I can only pay by the hour. So for one hour I try it out. I don't want it. I shut it off. That I just get charged for one hour. And 500 rupees for one month is very very economical. Currently, it's uh, showing because of the database, but that's completely optional. We just added it so that we can uh, update the website without actually changing the code. But if you are, uh, if you know HTML, CSS, you can uh, get your images and upload it right here, and it's not going to cost you anything. It's 484 rupees, uh, which in dollars is very less. And I'll also tell you how to get free credits now. All right, resource by resource, by location. So if it's someplace in Central India, US, uh, Australia, if you have multiple instances of the same website running to increase the performance, so it's going to tell you which country is costing how much money. So thank you for uh, Priyanchi to letting us share this from her account. We'll be closing this. Uh, this I have already explained. So now I'll just go to my PowerPoint. All right, so, oh, sorry, just a sec, from current slide. Mm -hmm. 
all right uh -huh. all right since we are only like 12 minutes ahead so building example i already gave it to you so now comes the resources so suppose after the end of this event and the q and a you say that i want to learn more a you can access this video anytime you want i'll share the link second what you can do is you can obviously youtube but youtube never you just gives you the one answer but it never gives you an entire course of what microsoft azure is you want to learn the theory you want to do amazing types of thing you can do so this is the link ms learn so ms learn is something called microsoft learn microsoft being so awesome has provided a complete documentation of azure it has provided free courses which you can complete and learning it's they are called learning paths which is your fundamentals you can start with the fundamentals you go to part 2 you can also know how to deploy a website and you can get certified by microsoft as an azure expert and all these uh, courses learning paths and modules are for free i'm current year part 3 as you can see completed my part 1 and part 2 so this is and these are very short courses one hour 36 minutes and you get the basics 2 hour 40 minutes you get a second uh, and then 2 hour 18 minutes and you are completely a good master in azure so this is one of the best uh, places so this is the link i'll show you in my ppt i'll also share my ppt second is student credit so now uh, the main question comes uh, you have learned how to uh, deploy a website you have seen videos you have learn from microsoft learn but now you want to do some hands on you want to host your portfolio you want to host a website for a society you want to host something but you are currently not sponsored by any mnc or you don't have the budget to do it so what do you do is it a waste no what you can do is get these student credits uh, all you got to do is go on to google and type student as your student credits and you'll be uh, you'll get this link in the first i'll just show you this is the first link that you see completely so what it gives you it gives you a hundred dollars so a hundred dollars is a lot of money if you think about like 500 per month you get for the uh 100 dollars you get 7000 rupees in azure credits this is just an estimate just to know and experiment with azure completely free you don't have to have a credit card you don't have to have anything all you need is a student id so something that ends with dot edu i have one uh it gives you 100 dollars for one year you can practice a lot of things deploy a lot of things and with 500 per month it's going to last you the entire year and once you are completely comfortable and have a lot of projects on your resume you can then be safe uh, be good enough for an mnc to Uh, be hired and then you can use their credits to use as your professionally so if you're a developer if you're a student this is the best place to get <coughs> hosting and free 100 dollar credits all you got to do is start free start with a uh, going to ask you a lot of questions what uh, institution you are from your email id and then you can easily see it's I have one dot edu. It just needs to be a dot edu domain uh, email, and that's pretty much it for <coughs> how you can get student credit. So, isn't it just a sec? All right. So, this is how uh, you can get. resources so you can get ms learn you can simply google ms learn or i'll just share the links and get student credits and that's so can i slide yeah and now you can get in touch with me so a if you want to be an uh, microsoft learn student ambassador b you want to learn something about microsoft azure c you just want to chit chat about technology i'm always available this is my website 
this is currently in development. Yes, it will be hosted via Microsoft Azure. Yes, this is a domain name I have purchased. This is my LinkedIn. I show you so that you can see. And the next is my GitHub. Uh, so I'll show you. I hope the recording is running. Yeah. All right. So this is my LinkedIn. You just type in Odit Kapoor and you can see this is my profile. This is how I look. This is my uh, picture. If you want, if you're confused, which Odit, uh, this is my profile. And you can just DM me here or connect with me to learn more about Azure or anything. Second, I would like to mention this is the profile of Priyanchi Katoria. The second uh, account you saw, she helped me with Microsoft Learn and uh, she was the one who uh, guided me through this application process. And as you can see, you can also connect with her. She is one of the best minds in technology and one of the best uh, students out there. Third is this. This is my GitHub. Uh, if you ever want to, I usually code in Flutter. So Flutter is, I'm pretty sure you're aware. Uh, if you want some good repositories, uh, want some project ideas, something, a website, country app, any app, so you can just hit me up and look me up here. And all right, so I'll open the mic. Uh, so now I have uh, almost done with this completely and this is the Q&A time. So if you guys have any questions, anything you guys want to know about, anything you guys want to ask, you can ask me right now. All right, uh, I think there are no questions. Uh, I don't think you guys can access the chat, uh, but you can just unmute yourself and ask me a question if you guys are interested in asking anything. Right. I'll just show you the final uh, outputs of uh, what I deployed and then we'll wrap it up. All right, so this is the main website that we did a summary and a recap. I'll just open this. All right, so I hope I told you about cloud computing. I told you about Microsoft Azure. I gave you a demo with the hands on session. I showed you cost analysis and I showed you the resources and the links. All right, so this is the website that I deployed with my friends. You can check it out, IEEE.ncindia.edu. Uh, and a huge shout out to IEEE and IES for letting me use uh, this to demonstrate. This is the WordPress blog uh, that we deployed right now in this session. And if you ever want to just access uh, admin panel, all you got to do is all right. All right. Oh, I'm already logged in. So all I gotta do is just go to uh, customize. And here I can change anything and everything on this website. And it's a simple WordPress one. This is the next website that we deployed. This is demo Django website dot Azure websites dot net. This is, and it's completely easy and you can obviously learn it. And it's amazing what Microsoft Azure does. And here is the look. And oh yeah, one more thing. This is the panel you get uh, once you have already deployed some stuff. So you get your recent resources here. So if I want to. Uh, all right, I'll just open this resource group. So here it's going to show me my blog, my blog's insights, uh, my Django website, and uh, the service plan I'm using. 
in one resource group group and then there are a lot of things i can create a vm i can create cosmos db sql databases postgres anything you can imagine uh, microsoft azure has so let me just explore ai ml you can create resources for ml you can use computer vision you can use text analysis face detection and this is just for ai ml this is analytics you have a lot of analytics services available blockchain blockchain is very very interesting concept in its own there is azure blockchain workbench there is ethereum support there is a lot of ethereum support here so you can do that compute so you get a complete virtual machine so basically think of your windows 11 windows 10 or mac os completely virtualized on website so that gaming example i was saying so all you got to do is create a vm install your games and you get a very good internet speed trust me i have done so you get one gbps and onwards you download your game you install it you play it and then you just close the vm and you are done with it so you don't actually have to buy a rtx 3090 or buy a ryzen i for a huge 150 200 fps function app is also a very interesting thing so function app is what uh, you create a web app which has some functions so it can be timer based so every day at 10 am you uh, update something every 10 seconds you do something or every time http request is made you do something so if you want to create some custom functions a function app is that and there are a lot of things wordpress node exporter bitnami you can just check out these and i think that's about it uh, if there are any questions you can ask uh, else thank you for joining i hope i answered all your queries and how to deploy a website on azure uh, thank you for being a part of this session